how are you different? What happened for you through that process of our first year? One of the things I'm excited about is we are, you're actually all jumping in for another year. We're all going to get in together again. But what happened from this first year and particularly uh, things that might have surprised you, unexpected ways you have changed from your our time together? I'd be happy to jump. One thing that I, I'm, I'm noticing is um, I've just, I, I probably don't grip onto things as strongly as I once did with a particular story that convinces me that I'm right. And if it doesn't work out a certain way, then it's wrong or terrible or worth, um, you know, really kind of get it kind of uh, putting more emotion into something. Um, and frankly, just losing focus on what, what I really value. And so I think there's this, um, there's this notion, you know, that you raise in your book, Diana, that we talk about, which is the universe kind of moving through you and really, um, really just kind of believing in what's unfolding um, mm -hmm. and, and, and trusting what, what happens and, um, I, I think maybe it's just a higher degree of trust despite the outcomes day to day and that in, in, in the goodness of it all. And that kind of has been freeing and liberating and it, it's allowed me to, I think, apply myself without unhelpful, um, probably unhelpful anxiety. Mm. Mm, that's beautiful. Thank you. For me, I really have the, um, I think a thing that I, I love working hard. I've always loved working hard. And a thing that I noticed I was subscribed to before is I need to work hard to get what I want. And I don't even know that the want piece was there now that I think about it. I think it was, I need to work hard to achieve my goals, <laughs> uh, which is not the same as get what I want. And in fact, what I wanted wasn't, um, as closely linked to my goal as I thought it was. And I've replaced goals with um, what I want. <laughs> and I now fully believe, because I have experienced it so many times, that it actually can be easy and that when I'm making it hard, like, I should get curious about that. Mm. Um, that if I get curious, I, it might be fun, it might be easy, it might be fast. I might discover things I didn't know. I might find out new levels of things I want. I might, it might be amazing. I might channel Premal. Like it might be just, um, like even this morning, you know, I invoked that because a lot of stuff broke, a lot of things I expected to, to be in place this morning, people showing up for things at certain times, nanny, so forth, didn't happen as planned. And I, I noticed I felt rushed and then I caught myself and I said, I don't want to feel rushed right now. I want to feel like I've got all the time in the world and I'm super relaxed and mm. I'm, and I'm, I'm happy to see my kids play around a little bit on the way to the car. And I'm, and I, I want to feel like there's, it's going to be easy for me to get through this, you know, unexpected circumstance and that everyone's going to be more whole because of it. And I want to feel these things. And I also want to get to work on time and I want to show up for the session that I have booked and I want to be really calm and like of service when I arrive. Mm -hmm. And so I just um, started moving through those steps, you know, the steps of getting the kids to school and finding backup care and taking them there and um, arrived here. I, w I could, I literally couldn't believe it. I got here only three minutes late. <laughs> and I had prepared my client that I might be half an hour late because that was, and that even felt like it's going to be a lot, but time just expanded around me. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, literally every morning I get up and part of my routine is I write in a gratitude journal, which had been sitting on my bedside table for a very long time, many months before I gave myself the treat of starting to use it. And I really credit CLG with that. And then when I, what I wrote this morning was, I want to not feel rushed. And then sure enough, this opportunity, I created the opportunity to like say like, do you really 
want to know that you cannot feel rest. And then I created the not feeling rest. Nice. It was magic. Nice. That's so great. I love hearing your stories and what's changed for you. And especially knowing that you flew every month from LA up to San Francisco to be oh, a yeah. group, which was a huge commitment. So yeah, at first it felt hard. I was really nervous about that. And then it felt easy. <laughs> I wanted it to feel easy. I got up at four in the morning to fly up there. Wow. Yeah. It was totally easy. How about for you, Joe? What, what changed for you? Yeah. Um, I think the, you know, the biggest shift, and I think it's, you know, repeating kind of what Keneal said is this, it feels like the greatest secret in the world, the, the belief that you can look at every situation in life as an opportunity rather than a struggle that, that actually I can shift above the line and with joy and ease actually have more like that. It's not this trade off of like, is if I work harder than against this and I have to, I have to suffer in order to have that, that like, <laughs> that I can, I can do this work in my own head and, and with the support of the group and see whatever the circumstance, Oh, I get to be in out, you know, I get to be in San Francisco one day a month. What's the opportunity in that mm -hmm. just happened for me this week. I really wanted to go to burning man and it didn't happen. And it was the best thing ever. Like, and in fact, I wrote down that the reason I wanted to go to Burning Man was I wanted to make some deeper connections with with certain people that, that I was going to hang out with. And some things came up and I didn't go to Burning Man. And my week was all about deeper connection. And I just never would have been able to sort of let, you know, like before kind of like life was a thing that was happening to me. And I was like struggling and dodging and worrying and managing. And I'm still in progress, but just this idea that there's opportunity and everything. And then the second part of having like a group of people that speak that language with me, like I've never kind of my personal journey has always been a solo journey before, but to actually have like this cohort of friends and, um, uh, and a group that, that holds me to that and supports that and uses that language is so, so great for me. Yeah, good. Well, you're, you're um, bringing me to my next question, which is what do you like about group learning? So it sounds like that's part of it. Anything else you want to share about what you like about and value about group learning versus the solo learning? Yeah. Um, I mean, certainly one part is like the power of reinforcement. Like, you know, when you learn, when I've learned it in front of 11 people that I'm going to keep seeing and keep being with, like versus I learn it with my coach, you know, kind of in a room by myself. And then I, it's easier to let it go and just keep it in that room versus making it a part of my life is one thing. And then um, there's so much that opens up from other people's work, mm -hmm. you know, like there's kind of a like directions that I can go myself, but so many of the big insights, I mean, I could like, you know, the two people on this call with me, Camille and Premel, like I've learned so much from the two of you this year watching your own work, watching your responses to work, like just totally new directions for me. Mm. <laughs> Getting to get in, like to, to hear um, and witness the internal journey that, that different people go on and the different ways there are to be with yourself and to be with your growth. Um, it, it's like there's all these new pathways now available where I've, I'm really used to my own way of trying to grow. And then I, I see how others do it. And, and part of it is like, I recognize like, wow, good job, Keneal. Like, you know, like you, you're not alone. Like you struggle too, but you've also overcome some things like this. Or I realize there's a totally different way to approach life in general and to look at this. And, and then um, the opportunities for feedback which is, you know, the, the kind of structure and the rigor of CLG, I just love so much that it, um, it, it, it's like it kind of guarantees that plus the really great selection of who's in the group, which I think you do a really good job of, um, but it guarantees that the feedback is going to be supportive. I, I always felt like I'm getting feedback that is going to be really transformative for me but I also feel very much loved in the mm. process of being seen in a really vulnerable way. Mm, that's great. Hey, I like that. Yeah, it's, um, 
it, uh, so much of um, kind of my own growth work has been just independent and on my own. And this is my first group. Um, and um, like Joe and Keneal, there's so much richness in, um, in one, actually deeply knowing some other people. Um, I find that even folks who I consider really close friends, given how busy life is, um, it's actually really hard to know what's really going on for someone else. And then because this is a group where we try to um, really just try to elevate ourselves um, to, um, to, to a kind of more loving version um, of ourselves, it's really interesting to watch how um, you know, my peers in this group resolve um, or try to be the resolution of, of the things that, that they're working on and their work so often is my own work. And it's, it introduces like new language in a way that, um, it's the power of stories, right? It's, it's like, um, I can learn a bunch of concepts, but to actually have 10 other stories of, of people, of characters I know well, of people I love and to see the struggle and then see attempts at resolution. There's just, um, I, I don't know, it's just an incredibly rich and frankly efficient way to learn. Mm -hmm. um, and and surprise, it's a surprising to me. Um, uh, it's, it's actually been wonderful. So um, yeah, I mean, I, I, will, I will admit, I think taking time to meet with a group every month for a, a period of time when you, you already feel like you're dropping balls um, can feel um, can feel like a bit too much. And I think I've been surprised at how leveraged that time mm -hmm. is 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 actually in a group setting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like you using the word efficient because I really get that. I, I experienced that the group work is so efficient. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, um, you know, funny because I just think of it as fun. <laughs> yeah. I see it on my calendar and I look forward to it. 